I'm still on a break at the moment and the workshop only just opened back up this week. But just so we can deliver you a weekly tank restoration fix, I had a good friend of mine help me out filming and editing this episode. Hey you going guys, uh, we have a CVRT and the variation is a Sabre. It's currently in for some maybe not so minor but fairly major work because it doesn't have any drive. If you come forth, you'll notice down in the hole there is no input shaft. Uh, this one appears to have sheared off at some point. The cause is unknown but it is a fairly common thing that happens with these vehicles. So this is, um, I guess it's part of the fan drive, it's also part of the engine to gearbox. And the input shaft is technically supposed to be in there, but at this point in time with this pulley over here, it's supposed to be over there. That's our main problem and it requires us to have to remove the gearbox, which is a fairly decent sized job. So that's, that's the little drive shaft or tail shaft. Actually very similar to what's on actually late model cars, believe it or not, except much smaller. Fan drives, mirror, um, you know, most stuff, fire control box. This is just stuff I've had to take off to just find out what's wrong with it because the, the initial problem was it's got no drive, none at all. It doesn't go forwards, go backwards. However, it would still neutral steer. We need to find out what caused that to happen. So I, I sort of half suspect some bearings might have failed and it then just did what it did and it's now broken. Right, so my first port of call is to um, try and figure out a way to empty this cooling system without making an enormous puddle. Let's establish I'm going to make a mess. Just thought I'd mention, I did try to avoid making a giant puddle, I tried my hardest, but sometimes it's just not possible. You almost wouldn't believe it, would you? I can't undo the bottom bolt because there's another thing just in the way that you can't even see. Right, um, I've encountered a slight issue with the fact that the socket won't work, that stuff is still in the way, but I can get a spanner in, but it's too long. So I'm actually going to make it into a vent spanner. You can't actually buy specifically vent spanners for certain things, but I haven't got one on me right now, so I'm going to make one. Well, this is going to pull it off, I'd like to get it. So not only did I bend the spanner, but I actually thinned it out around the head, so it could actually fit in some tight spaces. Sometimes when you go, I don't have a tool that works, just make it. Mm, half town at a time, but we're doing it. And if I meet the person who invented this, or decided, yes, that's a good spot for that, I may have to have some choice words. So those engineers who think, you know where we're going to put a starter motor? Under the inlet manifold of a car. This is the gearbox or the vehicle we're currently working on. It's not actually that complicated, it's just a lot of small cars. I've got to give my friend James Flush a bit of a shout out because he's been helping me with this. Um, because he's got a scimitar, same vehicle, different turret, and he's building that at the moment. So he's got all the technical drawings, so he's been sending them, them to me. At the moment I'm trying to undo this, which is the drain plug, which you push in, and if it wasn't seized on the floor, it would probably work perfectly. So I've got to take this cap off, take the spring out, undo that. Um, 
the two lock nuts and pull that cable hopefully through the firewall. But yeah, I just had to mention him because he's been very, very handy. Might remove the seat and the tiller's out of the way. Is there any bolt into the floor? Once the seat's out, I'm pretty confident they'll come out really relatively easily. There we go. Alright, that's the uh, quill shafts, drive shafts, whatever you want to call them out. Uh, pretty simple, basically. There's this little teeny tiny hubcap. Sits over there, four screws, that comes off. There's a thread in the end. I've just jerry rigged myself a random bolt that fit with two spanners so I can have a handle. You can see a sort of a, a detent sticking up between the threads, well, I guess the splines. So that, you push that down, that pops in, and obviously vice versa when you pull it out, you push it in and someone uh, pulls it out. And that uh, is how you disconnect it. And you're supposed to do that to obviously both sides before you tow the vehicle. I wonder whether it's worth just having a go at lifting it out without taking the firewall out. See, if you could take that hose there off, to that lower hose. Oh no, that's bent anyway, that's that one there. Yeah, that's more I just done here. Yeah. If you took that off, you got more room there than you got poking past there. Yeah, I mean, realistically, this is there's not, I've undone the firewall there. All that electrical bulkhead stays there. I've just, I've got to suck the brake fluid out of the reservoirs, otherwise it's going to come pouring out of there, which it may do anyway. I mean, all those pipes and stuff that actually stay on the firewall. I've never disconnected the cattle with. There. So that rod stays up here. So the idea is to try and keep as much yeah, 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 as yeah. possible. But same with this. When this comes out, keep it all together. Um, so there's been a bit of progress since yesterday. I've um, gotten a lot of the bulkhead fittings out, dip sticks out, that runs through, that came through, the, put the bracket that holds the radiator down, that's out, took the infill panel out, now you can get to brake lines, because they come down from the reservoirs, and then there's two lines down there that join into the calipers that go here and here, the calipers are going to stay on, I'll undo those, take the fluid out of there, uh, I've undone all these fittings through here, pulled everything back onto the gearbox and sort of tied it out of the way. Here the dipstick took it out, reconnected it and forced it backwards. We took the shafts out yesterday. At the moment, the only thing holding the gearbox in is its three mounts, the two, one on either side and the one front, and then find the two brake lines. And then this thing is actually ready to come out. The next thing after, after that is we're gonna tackle the last couple of bits on the firewall and then pull that out as one big piece. And then after that, is pull the whole gearbox out. How far away are you from actually to the point where you're going to lift the transmission out? Oh, that was more than that. Oh, okay, right. It's pretty sure with a lot of these Tommy systems, the height and alignment of the transmission is set by thinness underneath the transmission. Is it lead on? No, well, I'm talking about the actual floor now. Yeah, so that one down there probably has a shim or two in it. So before we actually loosen the bolts off, let's have a look at it to see if there's a way we can actually mark the position of it because there, there could be alignment this way plus also the, the height. Now I reckon it could be a rocking, it could also be a reason why that shaft potentially failed because the alignment between the engine and the transmission has to be really spot on, otherwise it'll fatigue the shaft. So, before we loosen any transmission bolts, let's have a look at it together to see if there's a way of marking how the car goes in. Alright, so some time has passed. The floor plate is out with the pedals. The seat is out. The side panel is off the engine. The wires are disconnected. The firewall is actually now only being held in with gravity. I've just got to do the brake lines. Take this pipe out and then we can test the tensile strength of anything that's still attached.
Next thing is the gear up. Obviously we're going to undo the brake lines and the mounts. And that's about it, then it's... No, it sort of does have a bit of a shim on there, doesn't it? It's there, shims and stuff, but it doesn't look like uh, there's any sort of side-to-side -side adjustment, really, does it? Yeah. See these? They're supposed to be tight against that. Yeah. Right, so we now have the gearbox out, as you will have just seen. Uh, we now need to basically get this apart. So we've got broken clutch springs, and that's the problem. That's not really supposed to wobble around, and it's supposed to be about an inch longer. So. We've disassembled it enough to see what's wrong. We're going to replace seals, open this up, clean this out, replace all these springs, um, assess all the bearings, and then um, probably in another video, you'll we'll probably see us getting really into this and finding where the other end of this shaft is.